It's brother versus brother, cousin versus cousin, and Colonel Joshua Chamberlain versus the backwood grunts of the 15 Alabama Infantry in today's Motivated Moments in History. <laughs> Listen up, kids. In today's colleges, we see professors teach about the need for safe spaces, having 76 genders, and how yogurt is racist. But long gone are the days where college professors were dick-stomping Civil War badasses like Colonel Joshua freaking Chamberlain. He was born in Brewer, Maine, proving that Maine can produce at least one cool thing that's not a lobster. He was brought up in a church and sang in a choir. His mother wanted him to grow up to be a pastor but his father encouraged him to follow in the footsteps of his ancestors before him by joining the U.S. military and carrying old glory on the battlefield with his ball sack out and dropping some primitive brown star and some enemy forces. He suffered from a speech impediment but finally defeated it in early adulthood. While attending college in Bowdoin, he became inspired by the institution president's wife, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and became a much more ardent opposer of slavery. After graduating, he attended seminary and then returned to the, his alma mater to be a language professor. When the Confederate States split from the Union and the Civil War was in its infancy, Chamberlain spoke openly to his students about the uh, importance of military service. His fellow administrators opposed him joining the Army because, like everyone else at colleges, they're a bunch of yuppie, nine-gender-having hippies. His college refused to give him a leave of absence to go serve, so he lied to them, said that he was going to go to Europe and study some languages, so they gave him a sabbatical. Unbeknownst to his fellow professors and even to his family, he snuck down to the governor, uh, requested to join the state's militia, and then it was approved. So Josh packed his bags, kissed his wife and two kids, and set out on the old dusty trail to slay some motherfucking bodies! <laughs> he was commissioned as lieutenant colonel and signed to the 3rd Brigade 1st Division of V Corps. Uh, one of his first battles was the Battle of Fredericksburg. There, on one cold night in freezing temperature, uh, he had to stay warm and survive that evening by covering himself with the bodies of his fallen comrades, which continued to absorb the onslaught of Confederate small arms fire for the next many hours. His unit was exempt from the Battle of Chancellorsville due to everyone in the regiment having fucking smallpox. His commander was promoted to Brigadier General, so Josh moved up the ranks to uh, Fulberg Colonel. During the Battle of Gettysburg, Chamberlain was leading his force on the far left of the Union formation. Confederate forces comprised of mainly the 15th Alabama Infantry were whooping some serious ass, and then launched a surprise flank to seize a hill on the western line of the Yankees. Josh found himself as a primary target of this rebel attack, positioned himself at the base of the hill, and ordered his men to blast away in those toothless, illiterate Bama sons of bitches. His unit took massive casualties and was pushed back to the point of being almost irrelevant to the Union's defense. Running low on ammo, he rallied his troops and inspired them to fix bayonets as he ran out in front of them with his saber, and the unit charged the Confederates with a symphony of stabbing, chopping, and severing limbs, thus providing his enemy troops a front row seat to an interactive seminar of how to get your tank stopped 101. These actions saved the left flank of the Union and led to victory in the legendary battle. What's even more legendary is that he did this with a near-death case of dysentery. So not only was he stabbing these rebel dorks, he was also literally shitting down their faces. For these heroics, he was awarded a Medal of Honor. He ended up fighting in five more major battles, one of which he was severely wounded in the hip and groin. His blood loss was so massive that he was placed in a hospice-type medical care and was given a promotion to Brigadier General as a ceremonial act for the dying officer. Well, he didn't die, but he kept the rank. At the Second Battle of Petersburg, he was shot through the chest with clear entry and exit wounds. Instead of dying then or being a wounded little bitch, Josh rallied his forces and drop-kicked the enemy in their inbred butt-porking faces. He was commander of the Union formation during the surrender ceremony at the Apollomax Courthouse. After the war, he left the service and went on to become the 32nd governor of Maine. He also became a college president and then left the state and practiced law in New York. He died in 1914 of complications due to wounds received in Petersburg and is the last Civil War vet to die of battle wounds. He's buried at Pine Grove Cemetery in Brunswick, Maine. And that, kids, is your motivated moments of history.